Evening boys and girls, hope you're all right. Uh, it's late at night again. Sarah's gone to bed, dogs were asleep next to me. So I thought I'd come and do a little bit. It'll probably be a bit shorter tonight because uh, next couple of sections is not too much to them. So front wheels, rear wheels, same sort of idea. Um, I've just taken one lot off and cleaned them up. So I've got locating pegs, which I think is probably just a case of when you get them on right. Like, oops. Come on. Here we go. It just means that the tread pattern is it's lined up properly. But mm, wouldn't be the end of the world if you got it a bit out, I suppose. But mm. anyway. Um, it says there that the sort of hub part goes in, looks like it goes inside. So I just had a play with it. And it sort of fits inside it like that. So it's not sort of hep it's not sort of sandwiched in there. So it doesn't say not to glue it or anything like that. So it's not like the wheels can spin. Um which is fine because I didn't want them to spin anyway. So this is just a case of bit of glue in there. And then put it together. Might as well line the pins up because why wouldn't you? If you see me struggling with things like this, it's because um, I'm uh, 50 blah, 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 now and oh I had I oh as a kid I was short sighted and then about 13 14 years ago I had laser eye surgery and it was brilliant if you're ever ever thinking of doing it do it because it's fantastic. I had perfect eyesight for a good 10 years. But now, of course, you know, the muscles in your eyes get, get old like the rest of you, bits start falling off, you know. So uh, now I'm long sighted. So I've gone through several pairs of glasses, but seeing stuff up close now is getting a bit tricky. So another trip to the opticians. Get that sorted and that'll make life a little bit easier. Anyway, enough of my nonsense. Just have a slug of me brew. Right. Um, well, I've got three more wheels to make. They're all the same. So I'll come back when that's done. Right. <clears throat> so I've done the wheels. Not worried about getting them mixed up because the front and the back are obviously different. You can see in the middle there. Um, and then on the back, just make out in the center, it's slightly different top and bottom. So it's easy enough to work out where they're going to go. Um, it says to put the wheels on at this stage in section five, along with the steering arm, but I'm going to leave them off for now because it'd be easier to paint them and paint the chassis separately. So I'll just put them to one side. <clears throat> so now it's the front wheel guards all in one assembly and then assemble the fuel tanks on each side so I'll just get on with that um, let's get that stuck on first so again I've just taken them off and cleaned up cleaned them up before I uh, assemble it Okay, oh, that's straightforward. So just 
Got two little bits stick out there and the chassis just fits either side. And then the mud guards, did you see it just rests on the top of the chassis there? Okay. Just give that a minute to set a little bit. So then I've got the fuel tanks to make. Can you see that? I'm not sure how good this is focusing. Not too bad. I think it might be time to get a new phone. Um, I'm having to do these videos in short bursts anyway, because the, the memory's nearly full up on my phone. And uh, I can only do so like 20 minutes and I have to delete it. <laughs> Oh well, <clears throat> right then. So fuel tank. This this little bit, which is the fuel filler neck. I've already lost that on the carpet once. Bleak and clumsy. <sighs> Can you see it? No, I can't. I've kind of gone far. Oh, Me and my stupid fat fingers. <sighs> I'm tempted that whenever I open a kit, Get a tin of uh, like fluorescent yellow or something. Spray the whole lot in the box before I start taking it apart. So at least I can find the bloody bits. Ugh. It was right there. <laughs> yeah, I'll come back to that in a minute then. Anyway, how's your day? <laughs> We've been in uh, Durham City Centre today to do the last bit of Christmas shopping. Which was, uh, which was nice. Really quiet though. I thought there'd be a lot more people about, but... Car parks were busy, but other than that, it was all right. Well, if the uh, the fuel filler turns up, then I'll stick it on later. Otherwise, I'll have to cut a little bit of sprue off later on and stick that on and make it vaguely the right shape. These fuel tanks go together nicely.
can you hear the dog snoring? What she does is, I'll come in here, take my jumper off, put it on the floor. She goes up and falls asleep. She's getting on a bit. She's 14, 15 now, something like that. And, uh, yeah, she snores a bit. Bless her. Lovely old girl. One more fuel tank to do. When I was doing one of the videos the other night, I could hear Jacko the poodle uh, whining at the door in the video. So, if you wondered what that noise was, it was a poodle being cross for being left out of the room. These are another thing I never had when I was a kid. I mean, they obviously existed, but I wasn't going to fork out for these on my pocket money, not when a, a knife would do. I mean, this is just a, a basic hobby knife. And I did have some nice ones, but mostly um, what my dad used to do. My dad was in the RAF when I was a kid. And um, he had friends in the in the medical uh, section so I used to go in there and get me scalpels so there I was sort of like six seven eight years old playing with scalpels on my own in my room don't think you're allowed to do that sort of thing these days are you oh, I turned out right Ish. mind you he was an armourer as well so um things we used to get up to when he was duty armourer at the weekend so he was on his own of course there's me spending my weekends as an excitable little boy surrounded by guns and ammunition and things and he had the key to the ranges which was just down the road so um, if any of the weapons needed testing we'd uh, Pop down there. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's not going to get you in trouble now because he's, he's been gone for six years, but <laughs> you wouldn't have got away with the stuff we used to do in this day and age. But nobody seemed to care either. I mean, all these colleagues would have been able to walk past and See this airman letting his son use machine guns and rifles and pistols. Yeah, that's fine. You carry on, John. <laughs> Bless him. He was a bit of a character, me dad. He'll uh, crop up in my stories from time to time, because uh, he was a funny old son. And he was probably, I don't know, I wonder if he hadn't been in the RAF, whether I would have started doing models or not. I've got two big brothers, and they're much older than me. Um, and they were making making kits when I was really little. And you know what it's like when you're a little brother. You're in awe of your big brothers, aren't you? So I just wanted to copy them. So I can remember particularly the youngest elder brother, Graham. Um, he was making something. Uh I remember he used to make ships. Um, 
I have to ask him. Can't remember now. I can remember the smell of the the enamel paint and the glue and everything. So when I was about six, uh, one sunny afternoon, I had a go out in the back garden at my granddad's house. A sunny day. Have you ever seen them card tables with the sort of green felt top on it? They stuck me outside with one of those and gave me a I don't know where it came from, where I chose it or someone else chose it, but it was a, an English electric lightning. And I made such a horrendous mess of it. But did I care? Nah, loved it. Probably took me hours. I, you know, I didn't paint it. Because that would have, you know, got in the way of me putting the, the transfers on. So I just made this gluey, silvery blob and put decals all over it. And I was so proud of that thing. And then I've made hundreds of the things since then. I'm sure you've all got a story similar to that. So, we've all got a my first kit story, haven't we? I suppose some of us, it might be fairly recent. I should imagine there's a lot of us old boys, isn't there? Did it as a kid, come back to it years later, or never grew up and still, still doing it. Well, I don't know where that fuel filler cap's gone. I'll find it later, never mind. Right, uh, well, until that happens, I'm gonna call that a night. So, uh, I shall see you next time, which will be, ooh, start work on the, uh, on the back of it stretches and things in that'd be interesting because some um, I'm gonna have to start painting that before I put all this together so this might be where it all starts to go a bit out of order jumping backwards and forwards oh excuse me sort of assembling this painting the walls all that sort of thing so uh, yeah Anyway, that'll do for tonight. Thanks for watching. See you next time.